Good morning, Grade 7 students. I am April Lyra P. Gomez, a graduate at Philippine Normal University, North Luzon, with a Bachelor in Secondary Education, major in Biology, with certification in Teaching Senior High School, your Science 7 teacher. Before we proceed to our lesson for today, let us offer first a simple prayer. May I ask everyone to please close your eyes and pray. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, grant me each day the desire to do my best, to grow mentally and morally, as well as physically, to be kind and helpful, to be honest with myself as well as with others, help me to be a good sport and a smile when I lose as well as I win. Teach me the value of true friendship. Help me always to conduct myself so as to bring credit to my school. Amen. For today's lesson, we would talk about the wind system in the Philippines. These are the objectives. At the end of this lesson, the students should be able to enumerate the different wind system in the Philippines, identify the origin and formation of cyclones, and explain the effects of weather disturbances in the Philippines. Now, moving on, before we proceed to the main point, we'll be discussing first what are these terms talk about. So, we have temperature and density. When we say temperature, it is a physical quantity that expresses hot and cold, and it is the manifestation of thermal energy present in all matter, which is the source of the occurrence of heat, a flow of energy, when a body is in contact with another that is colder or hotter. So basically, when we talk about temperature, it's just about uh, pertaining to something hot and cold. While density is a measure of mass per volume. So this is the average density of an object equal its total mass divided by its total vo volume. So we needed these two things in order to have what we call density. An object made from a comparatively dense material such as iron will have less volume than an object of equal mass made from less dense substance such as water. We also have pressure of air masses. Pressure is defined as the physical force exerted on object. The force applied is perpendicular to the surface of objects per unit area. So how can we associate pressure in here? So if you try to cook something with a volume inside a pr pressure cooker, so therefore it could have a pressure. So, what is the relationship of pressure and volume? If pressure increases, the, the volume decreases. So, they have an inversely proportional relationship. So, if you try to put minimal water in while cooking in a pressure cooker, the more that it has a higher pressure. That's why uh, you need to let or let out the gases first that is built inside that built inside that pressure cooker in order for you not to be shocked with its heat or temperature so that's why it is necessary for us to learn about this concept for us to better understand that or, or how things work now moving on let's talk about trade winds when talking about trade winds, these are the most useful to the sailboats that carried on commerce during earlier days. So, what these trade winds offer to the people or the sailors? So, basically, they help the sailors in order to... Uh, reach immediately the place that they wanted to go especially that they are having a trade with other nationalities in order for them to barter or trade what goods do they have so uh, the moment that they are in this part or they experience these trade winds the more that the sail would move faster so it helps in the travel or how fast 
the travel would be. So, what about prevailing winds? Prevailing winds, rather, are winds that blow continually or periodically with the seasons. So, because of the geographic location of the Philippines, the major wind systems in the country are the following. So, we have what we call Northeast Trade Winds, Northeast Monsoon, and Southwest Monsoon, commonly known as hanging habagat. The relationship among temperature, pressure, and wind direction in this table explains why the northeast trade winds blow almost continually in one direction towards the equator. So, in here, we have the northeast monsoon and northeast trade winds, northeast trade winds, and southwest monsoons. So, in the first one, the northeast monsoon came from north, going to northeast and even in the east in the month of November to February. While about in northeast, trade winds, it came from east to southwest. That would be its direction that start, in, that start from February to May. And lastly, the southwest monsoon uh, directs to southwest to south. So, it happens in the month of May to October. The monsoons or seasonal winds, especially in the Indian Ocean and Southern Asia. They originate from the trade winds and are often characterized by heavy rainfall. Again, they, it is characterized by heavy rainfall. That's why it is in the Philippines... Uh, it is more frequent that we experience rainfall, even uh, especially in the times of uh, the starting of birth. So let us say just September, it, the rainfall or the uh, frequent rainfall could start from that month. The northeast monsoon originates from the northeast trade winds. The southwest monsoon originates from the southeast trade winds and curves in a southwest direction as it crosses the equator. So it says here that the northeast monsoon and northeast, northeast trade winds or the southwest monsoon, I mean, both of these monsoon differs in their direction. Say that the northeast monsoon originates from the northeast trade winds, then therefore the southwest monsoon would uh, originate from the southeast trade winds. So they differ exactly in its direction. They are opposite to one another. What about local winds? Considering the extensive coastline of our country, the north-south orientation of various mountain ranges as well as the presence of lakes and other bodies of water, the directions of the prevailing winds are somewhat changed in the different localities. These are called local winds. Local winds are also known as or also those over a limited area only. It blows between small, small low and high pressure system. Moving on, local winds are composed of two breeze. The warm air or during daytime, the land warms up faster than water, heating the air above it. The warm air over the land rises. The cooler air over the sea rushes toward land, replacing the rising warm air. The wind blowing from the sea is called sea breeze. So during the during daytime, sea is more colder than of the land. So that's why it is necessary for the wind from the sea to be blown into land so that temperature would be regulated. While with the, with the sun gun at night time, the land soon cools. By then, air over the water is warmer than air over the land. The warmer air over the sea rises. The cooler air from the land rushes toward the sea, replacing the rising warm air. The wind blowing from the land is called land breeze. So in Kirnaman, it is the land that is colder than the sea. So the land uh, blows 
the cold temperature or the cold air temperature towards the sea. So that's the two breeze. What about intertropical convergence zone or ITCZ? It is the region that circles the earth near the equator where the trade winds of the northern and southern hemisphere come together. So they both meet at about 5 degree north forming this intertropical convergence zone. When the warm moist air charging from opposite directions meet, they force the air upward. The rising warm air, known as doldrums, result in a low pressure zone at the equatorial region. What else? The ITCZ changes position throughout the year. It moves toward the area of greater solar radiation, thus it moves northward or even by as much as 40 degree to 45 degree during March to May when it is summer in the northern hemisphere and it, mo it moves southward to the same extent during September to February when it is summer in the south southern hemisphere. At other times, it is found just a little north of the equator. Now, what would be the effects of the weather disturbances in the Philippines? Torrential rains, flash floods, thunderstorms, and typhoons are not new or not new to Filipinos of any age. They are common occurrence in this tropical country. Every now and then, you also hear of a tornado that forms quickly and causes much destruction in certain places on land. When a tornado forms over the sea or lake, it is called water sprout. Now, moving on, what is tropical cyclone? Tropical cyclones are low-pressure areas in the tropics. The wind blows toward the center or eye of a cyclone, turning in a counterclockwise direction in the northern hemisphere and cloud and clockwise in southern hemisphere. The Philippines is located in the North Pacific Ocean where the greatest number of cyclones form. An average of 22 cyclones form in this area every year, about 19 of which enter the Philippine area of forecast responsibility. An agency in the Philippines known as PAGASA, which means the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, issues warning bulletins about a typhoon only when it is within the PAR or the Philippine area of responsibilities. Furthermore, there are kinds of cyclones. So they are classified according to maximum winds blowing near the center. So these are as follows. First, the tropical depression with a wind speed of less than 63 kilometers per hour. Tropical storm with wind speed of 63 to 118 km per hour and typhoon as with wind speed of more than 118 km per hour. So, it is or there are three kinds of typhoon in here. Now, what about the origin and formation of cyclones? So, we have the, the typhoon, now we have the cyclones. Most tropical cyclones form over large and warm areas in the ocean. Those that reach the Philippines generally from the near Caroline Marianas Island group and move towards the Philippines in a west-northwest direction locate the Caroline Marianas Island group on a map. In the area where a cyclone forms, the water is warmer than the surrounding waters its temperature being higher than 26 degrees Celsius. The warm air above the water rises, causing the low pressure. 
What else? The rising air expands. The expansion of air against pressure, that is pressure of the underlying or overlying atmosphere, result in cooling. This kind of cooling where no heat transfer is involved is said to be adiabatic. Rising moist air cools adiabatically at the rate of 1.5 degrees Celsius for over or for every 100 meters ascent. Cooling causes condensation of water vapor in the air, releasing large amounts of water. A, wa a low pressure area will fully develop into a cyclone only if the following conditions exist, such as continuous supply of rising moist air, sufficient lifting of the air, and lastly, continuous exit of air above to permit a continuous flow of air from below. If these conditions are not maintained, the low pressure area may dissipate or dissipate. Okay, what about the effects of typhoon? Typhoons are generally associated with dreadful outcomes such as loss of human lives and widespread damage to property and agricultural lands. But did we know that typhoons also have beneficial effects? So these are two of those benefits. First, typhoons bring an abundant supply of fresh water, although they, this may be accompanied by temporary flooding. So, floods are a natural occurrence during typhoons, often due to improper garbage disposal, clogged waterways, and poor urban planning, among others. Secondly, typhoons clean the environment by effectively removing pollutants from the air, rivers, and even in coastal waters of the country. Though, a uh, typhoon is a natural calamity, so we cannot really, or whether we want it or not, we will experience this natural phenomena. So, that would be all for our discussion for this week. Thank you for listening.